All right, here's the deal. Y'all are being way too mean to the Blade 2 video game. Every time I turn a corner, I hear someone bashing this game like it just insulted their grandmother. All right, to be fair, I never hear anyone talk about this game, but the point still stands. This game is not a total train wreck. Welcome back to the Blade video game retrospective, and I'm here to tell you why you're wrong about Blade 2. Released in September 3rd, 2002, and developed by Mucky Foot Productions, uh, yeah, that's a name. What else have these guys developed? Okay, so just two other games and the rest were cancelled. Doesn't instill a whole lot of confidence, but stick with me. Blade 2 is a single player action game combining elements of both a shooter and a beat em up. The shooting mechanics are pretty straightforward. You simply lock onto your enemy with your machine pistol or shotgun and fire away. Simple, but serviceable. You also have an assortment of gadgets like the UV bomb and the boomerang disc thingy. And let me tell you, clearing out a room full of vampires with one UV bomb is all so satisfying. The beat em up aspect is where things get really interesting. See, this is where a lot of people like to dunk on this game. Blade 2 has a combat system that utilizes the right analog stick. Okay, wipe that look off your face and give me a chance to explain. See, the idea was to give the player full 360 control of Blade's attacks, so when you're surrounded by enemies, you don't have to pick favorites and focus on one enemy at a time, or awkwardly switch targets in the middle of a big fight. Here, just flick the analog stick in the direction of an enemy and BAM! Right in the three-way jaw thing that you have there. Got a guy behind you, BOOM! Take that, baldy! It works as intended, which is more that can be said for janky PS2 era games. Sure, it's a little awkward, as gamers were more used to furiously mashing one of the face buttons to dispense our pent up aggression upon the digital masses. So I can understand when some people say that the feedback of pushing an analog stick isn't as satisfying as the more reassuring tactile one of a button press. But allow me to enlighten you. You have to look at this combat system from a different perspective. Instead of seeing these fights as encounters where you brutally pummel your enemies with the force of a primitive ogre, think of it as more of a graceful dance. Because not only does this game ask you to fight with the right analog stick, it also asks you to do it with rhythm. Mindlessly flicking the analog stick in the direction of your enemies is not the most effective way to attack. You'll do some damage, but you won't be stringing combos or pulling off finishers. I think this makes sense. If you're an expert martial artist like Blade, I can totally see someone like him comparing a big fight against multiple enemies to a dance where you have to stay in the zone, keep a certain rhythm, and freely flow from enemy to enemy. Freely flow. Free flow. Alright, yes, I know what you're gonna say, Arkham Asylum took this concept and executed it a hundred times better. But still, I think Blade 2 deserves some credit for trying something weird and different. This is what I love about the PS2 era of video games. Things hadn't been completely figured out. Nowadays where free flow combat is developed or Dark Souls style difficulty is designed, these blueprints are then found in a bunch of copycats. And nothing against that. Not to say that those games don't have anything to offer, but back in the day watching developers throw different ideas at the wall and seeing what sticks was really fascinating to me. Like Mark of Kree's combat system that lets you assign a face button to each enemy, or Advent Rising's crazy acrobatic shooting. I think this is an interesting take on handling large crowds and was surprised with how well it works. It feels even better when you build up your rage meter and can pull out your sword to slice through enemies like butter. And yeah, I know it's kind of dumb to have Blade's signature weapon be tied to a rage meter, but building this baby up is easy and it'll be readily available to you more often than you think. If anything, I would have liked to have seen more done with this combat system. Let me give you an example. So one thing this game severely lacks is any interesting boss fights. I can only remember two off the top of my head, and they were really underwhelming. I think it would have been cool if you had to face off against an enemy that matches Blade's martial arts skills, and you have to keep in rhythm with your attacks for an extended period of time to do damage. And if you mess up, you would have to work up that rhythm again. I think this would have made for some intense, engaging hand-to-hand -hand boss fights reminiscent of something like The Matrix. 
Now you may be asking, wait a minute, if the right stick is for attacking, what controls the camera? Well I'm glad you asked my curious good looking viewer, and while you're here, why not drop a like, flick that subby, and tell me what your favorite condiment is. Mine is secret sauce. So in this game, the camera is locked behind Blade and always follows the direction he's facing. That's pretty damn simple and simultaneously genius if you ask me. The camera never, and I mean never, gave me a problem. That is a miraculous thing to say for a game from 2002. Go to any review for a game of this time and I'll bet you one month's supply of secret sauce that one of the complaints it's how shitty the camera is. And Stay the hell away from my secret sauce by the way. One thing I found kinda hilarious is how this game has these little pickups that increase your score in the form of those glyphs vampires would have tattooed on themselves in the movie. It just feels so out of place here. I feel like freaking Pac-Man swallowing up pellets or Crash Bandicoot picking up wampa fruits. I bust chops, but these things are actually pretty helpful in guiding the player to where they need to go. Sometimes missions can be pretty lengthy and will require you to do some backtracking, and these little glyphs help push you in the right direction and avoid any frustrating moments of aimlessly wandering around. They also go towards unlocking new equipment. Before each mission, you get to choose a loadout that best fits your playstyle. I'll give you a pro tip. If you choose anything that's not body armor, brass knuckles, the machine pistol, and UV bombs, you're doing it wrong. There is one thing that this game does that is completely inexcusable, and that's escort missions. Yeah, I know it's one of the most tired and common complaints to make, but escort missions were easily at their worst during the PS2 era. This is some serious stress inducing stuff. It's made even worse by the fact that you can hurt your buddies. Am I crazy for thinking this game holds up graphically? I expressed this to my friends and they all laughed in my face. I mean, I don't think it looks as good as something like Silent Hill 2 or Metal Gear Solid 3, but I've certainly seen games that look a lot worse. It goes for a slightly cartoony look like Time Splitters or Second Sight, with characters having proportionately large heads, and I think it stands the test of time, which is more often the case for games that go for this style, rather than something that goes for hyper-realism. I think Blade 2 certainly looks better than some games that came out a decade later. One aspect I can't defend the game on is its story. I honestly can't remember for the life of me what this game is about, nor did I care while I was playing it. I'm sure it has something to do with some sort of new breed of vampires that's too deadly for it to see the light of day. Well, I guess technically they can't see the light of day because they're vampires. But you know what I'm getting at, it's forgettable as hell. I would have loved to see more recognizable faces from the comics. I'm not the most knowledgeable when it comes to Blade supporting characters and villains, so I don't know if they had much to choose from. I know him and Morbius mess around from time to time. I don't know, this is the Marvel Universe man. You guys swap spit with other superheroes villains all the time. Throw the blob in there, I don't care. So here's the bottom line. Blade 2 is far from a masterpiece. But is it a complete train wreck? Would I even call it a bad game? No. I'll tell you where the problem lies. You see, the first level takes place in a parking garage. And in said garage, there are multiple occasions where a car will drive by and try to hit you which it succeeded to do so in my playthrough, and it is really annoying. In fact, it's probably the clip you see of the most when people bash this game online. And fair enough, the devs really shouldn't have started the game with such an annoying first impression. But with that removed, I see a game where the guys at Krusty Legs tried to do something weird and different with its combat system that's never been done before. Well, as far as I know, if you know a game that has a similar combat system that came up before Blade, let me know in the comments. But in my opinion, this weird idea worked. It wasn't revolutionary, but I thought it was creative nonetheless. And with that, we wrap up the Blade video game retrospective, covering all of Blade's major video game releases, not counting any mobile games or involvement in ensemble games like Marvel Ultimate Alliance. But before I put a stamp on this retrospective, I do want to shout out the Ghost Rider movie game that features Blade as an unlockable character. And not just a skin or a costume, but as his own character, complete with a unique moveset and voice lines. That's pretty damn cool. 
I hope you enjoyed this short little retrospective on some overlooked games that maybe I was able to bring your attention to. I doubt we're gonna see a solo Blade game anytime soon. So if you're ever in the mood to slay some vampires as the Daywalker, I recommend popping in one of these games. Definitely the first one on PlayStation. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.